What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Giant Voices podcast. This episode, we had on none other than Casey Adams. Casey's the host of the Rise of the Young podcast. He's also the CEO of Build Your Empire. Instagram account has over 1.5 million followers, puts on the biggest events in the world. This episode, we talked about Casey's life. Uh, He had a life-changing injury when he was 15 years old that led to his personal development and self-education that eventually led to him meeting Ty Lopez and Ty flying him out to LA to tell his story. Today, Casey sets on the stage with entrepreneurs like Gary Vee, Grant Cardone, and some of the biggest entrepreneurs in the world. His brand growth has led him to working with brands like K-Swiss, Modi, and Casey truly is a super connector and networking genius. It's been an honor to watch him grow over the last two years. Every guest that's been on the podcast so far and a lot of the ones I have lined up all trace back to Casey and our relationships. So I'm excited to share the insights and the stories that he goes into depth on this episode. And if you love the episode, please don't forget, subscribe, share, rate, review, tell a friend. It all helps a ton. And I really appreciate you guys listening. Enjoy. Do you ever wonder how some podcasts get thousands of new listeners and you don't? Do you wonder how people get featured in major publications? Do you ever wonder how Instagram videos go viral? Welcome to the Giant Voices Podcast, hosted by Carson Jones. Every week we bring you the biggest names in podcasting, marketing, and public relations to help you break through the noise and take your brand to the next level. Oh, And we like to mix in the uncomfortable topics like mental health, anxiety, and the internal battles that keep us from growing. Now, let's get to the show. What's up, everybody? and Welcome back to the Giant Voices podcast. This is your host, Carson Jones, founder of Giant Voices Media. Today, I have on another guest. This is a really exciting guest because this is somebody I've known for a really long time. I've watched him build his empire through podcasting, watched him build his brand over the last couple of years. Um, we have on Casey Adams. Casey is the CEO of Build Your Empire, an event and entrepreneur brand that has over 1.5 million followers on Instagram. Casey is the host of the Rise of the Young podcast, which was actually featured today on the What's Hot section in the business category. He's interviewed over 100 elite entrepreneurs. And at the age, ripe age of 19, he just turned 19 years old. Casey's landed brand deals with K Swiss, partnerships with consulting apps like Modi. And he's taken the stage of world class entrepreneurs like Gary Vee, Grant Cardone, and countless others. Uh, most importantly, a very good friend of mine. And we've known each other for a little over two years. And I've watched his career take off. So it's an honor to finally have him on the show. Casey, thanks for being on. Dude, Carson, I really appreciate it, man. It's definitely my honor, my brother. Yeah. So, we talked about this the other day, you know, how to how to do different stuff with podcasts and, you know, how to create stuff that people want to listen to. And I think the the big thing is like talking about stuff that you don't hear everywhere else. So everybody always asks you the questions, you know, how do you build your brand? How do you do this and that? And we're going to get into that because I think that's where you can provide a lot of value. But I want to go back to before we actually met, because what started your entrepreneurial career was actually an accident that changed your life forever. So what was your life like before that? And then what happened and let's start there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, first thing first, I just want to say thank you again for having me on the show and listening. Carson's been such a help in just everything that I've been doing on my podcast. And he's really just helped me get that off the ground when I first started it. And he's helped me really just with a lot of things, but uh, we'll get into that. But the question, when I was 15 years old, and like you said, I had an injury that occurred in my life that really just set the stage for like the next years and then now career in which I'm pursuing. And it, it happened, which... I would say completely like changed not only my life, but the the mindset I carried along into what I'm doing now. So I was 15 years old. I was about to be a sophomore in high school and I got diagnosed with something known as interspinous ligament damage. And overall what this is was I was playing football and I've always been an athlete growing up. I played hockey for 10 years and I played lacrosse. Then I transitioned to football going into high school and loved high school, um, loved football at the time. And the first day of hitting practice of sophomore year, I ended up hitting my head on the ground in some weird way and my helmet, according to the doctor, guillotined my spine. And overall, that led me into being in a neck brace for over six months. I could never play football again. And they told me that I could have been potentially paralyzed if I was to hit my head harder or a little bit in a different way. And overall, it really just scared me, scared me. But more importantly, it just gave me so much anger and I was depressed and I went into this mindset of just complete uncertainty of what I wanted to do with my life moving forward as this sophomore in high school and it's been about three years now I just turned 19 years old I'm living in Arizona and we'll get more to the story but that was for sure the catalyst of 
everything that I'm doing now because that's the time in my life where I picked up a book for the first time. I started diving into social media marketing and the rest speaks for itself. But uh, that, that was for sure a pivotal point in my life that really set the tone moving forward. So what what were you doing like before you got hurt? I know you're just a kid, but you know, it seems like this has always been innate to you. Like you always wanted to be an entrepreneur. You always wanted to live a little bit differently. Like were you like this before you got hurt or was there something that going through that like triggered this? Yeah. So I, I would say like growing up, like looking back, it's, it's funny because now, nowadays, and even like two years ago, it's, it's like you hear people like Gary Vee talking about this entrepreneur buzzword, social media terms. But me growing up, like I've always, I, I hate to say it, but I've always not wanted a job, right? You, like, I, I have, I have parents that they both work corporate jobs. My mom, well, she's a teacher and I've seen even my two older brothers go to work. They're both working. They're both bartenders and they love their job, but that's not what they, really want to do. And I, I always saw a part of people that I was either surrounded by just complaining. And it was more so the fact that they didn't have any time freedom or they didn't, weren't doing what they wanted. And being the youngest of three brothers, I, I more so was able to analyze like what to do, but then also what not to do. And I'm not saying having a job is bad. I, I, there is jobs that need to be fulfilled out there. But I'm saying with the opportunities that are there today with social media and digital advertising and building a brand on social media and, and podcasting, Yes, that was something I stumbled upon three years ago. But before that, growing up, like when it snowed in Virginia, that's where I'm from. I was going around 10 houses every single day, like shoveling snow when I was hiring or quote unquote, getting some of my bu like buddies to go, I would bring them the deal, meaning I would have the house that we could snow shovel their driveway and I would get them to go to the house and I would pay them a commission or whatever, or whatever you like to de define as entrepreneurship. But I was always looking for different ways to make money. So I could, whether that's go hang out with my friends or go out to eat, like, especially when I became a teenager, but like, it was always sort of that thing where I tried to leverage, meaning like I, we all have a certain finite of time. So leveraging other people to help get the job done and quote unquote, build a team has always been important to me, whether that's in sports and the end goal is to score a goal. You can't do that alone. And I learned at a young age where it's like collaboration with people, you can always get more stuff done. So now within the last three years, I've really incorporated that mentality that I've had from a young age into what I'm doing now with the different podcasts and the partnerships and everything that I really have built up to this point. No, I, I love that. And it it's almost like, like you sort of had to fall into this by accident. Because you couldn't do a whole lot. Like you're, you know, you're basically stuck in your room. Like what was, what was the recovery time period like? And what were you doing that whole, that whole time that kind of set you up for everything that would happen afterwards? Yeah, that, no, great question. So like, it's funny because when I, um, when I walked into the doctor that one day, I, I, intentionally thought that it was going to be a little short injury. Like I would just have to lay it on the couch for maybe a week and then I'd be back to practice after I take some medicine. Right. But it was one of those things where I walked into the doctor, do the x-rays and yes, like my neck, I couldn't really move it. But like I said before, they said, Hey, you have to be in a neck, a neck brace for the next six months. Or if it gets better before then we can slowly start to take you off of, of the neck brace. But this was something where literally, like I said, for six months, I was in a neck brace, like 24 hours a day, technically, I could. I had to sleep in it. I had to eat in it. The only time I couldn't wear it was when I would take a shower. But it was. I was literally like restricted in terms of a like my neck movement, but b most importantly like my mental energy. Like I couldn't go walk my dog and like run and like just do all these normal people things. I was really just like had to stay in my house and stay in my room, and I had to be very careful with like what I was doing. You know, it's like everyday tasks like taking out the trash or whatever it is turn into a struggle because like if I move my neck a certain way it would be very painful and I was in this sort of plastic contraption that just allowed me not to really move so back to the point of the question though it was during that time frame of six months and that's how long the recovery time was where I was sitting in my room and I was really just I had time to think and like being a young kid growing up in a community where it's like you're playing sports and I have some friends and we're just always just hanging out. Like that was the the life before I got into this neck brace. It gave me time to like contemplate like, oh, like what is my next step along this journey? If I can't play football anymore, what, do, what can I do for the next two years, three years while in high school? What can I do right now that can like make me like happy and passionate about something like I was sports? And because I got that taken away from me and I really just learned throughout that process and started finding different mentors online, which we'll get into like Ty Lopez and these people where I just dedicated a lot of time to started to reading books. But I know we kind of went off tangent there, but it was that six month time frame that really allowed me to 
have an open mind and dive into this new in- industry of self development and eventually digital marketing and all that sort of stuff that I do today. And I think that was probably where you got your power because you started diving into the self help, you know, they just the self education world, which is everything like you, it was almost more beneficial for you to do that than it was for you to be in real school. So like, what what happened next? So you, you get out, you've got this whole like renewed sense of energy and outlook. Like, you know, I, I obviously came along like, right when you had started the podcast, was that like the first move or did, was there a move before that? I, I know you wrote your book. Like there was, there was, a, you had a lot going on that like kind of propelled you to this next phase. Like what, what was first? Like what, what, what happened when you first uh, got out of that neck brace? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so just to bring some context to you and the community as well. So I, I started my podcast that was December, like 22nd, 2017. And this injury happened like late 20. 20- 15 so over three years ago almost and or beginning of 2016 and like the first year of 2016 i would or no no no, it was it was middle of 2016 excuse my inaccuracy of time middle of 2016 get this neck injury going into like the leading out of the summer and during that time my buddy and i start to learn more about ty lopez because we're seeing all of his ads and that's like I said, when I really dove into self-development because Ty was giving me all these book reviews, like thinking grow rich and how to win friends and influence people and all these different, I would say like pieces of information that I was diving into that, like you said, was like at the time and still is like more valuable than modern education because it, it, it allows you to really think on who you are. But moving into 2017 out of 2016, I started this brand. It started out as a t-shirt brand called Rise of the Young, which is now the name of my book, the name of my podcast. And I've really evolved with that name and that brand over time. But at the time, it was something where Rise of the Young was a sort of phrase that I came up with because I started seeing people like Caleb Maddox, who's my great friend now. He's He was 14 years old at the time. I was 15. And he was just crushing it. He was had 20,000 followers on Instagram. He was speaking on stage with Gary Vee. He's written nine books. And I, I started to see this like young demographic online. Kayla Maddox was probably one of the first people, but I was like rise of the young. It's more so a title that I came up with. And to kind of give it some context, I went to um, this website and I first ordered wristbands where they literally just had rise of the young on them. And I started selling them at school. And it was, like I said, I would order like 200. I would give like 10 to like five of my friends and I would go, I'd be like, Hey, go sell them for like three to $5, whatever deal you can get. Then at the end of the day, they would bring me back the profits and then I would pay them out. But like Rise of the Young was one of the things that like I started with on social media with I was posting pictures of the wristbands and trying to sell them. And I was also posting pictures of the books I was reading. And I just sort of dove into like this social media branding world more so because of I was reading books by Gary Vee, like Crush It. And he was saying, hey, build a social media page and start a brand and reach out to people and like just do that sort of like entry level stuff. And I really just started to apply it with massive action. And one thing led to the next and I'm just, we'll get more into it, but that led to a clothing line. And then eventually the book after I started doing some speaking events and met some key people. But yeah, that, that was sort of the step one in terms of like the first thing I, w- I was doing on social moving out of this neck injury. Yeah. So that's, uh, so the podcast really was like your, your p- point that you really helped your brand take off. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. Well, I would say the first thing. So I started the podcast end of 2017 and the beginning of 2017 was the first time I ever went to a networking event. So at the time moving out of 2016, I connected with Caleb, like I said, and long story short, he invited me to speak at an event in San Diego, California. And I, at that time when I was selling these wristbands, I was also doing some sort of um, Snapchat affiliate marketing. So I was building a following on Snapchat through these um, different like Snapchat forums and entrepreneur Snapchat apps such as ghost codes and all these different things. And I built this following of like a thousand, 2000 people a day on Snapchat and from my book reviews. And I was doing like book reviews of me talking to the camera and just, just entry level content. But it evolved into, I knew I had an audience. So I started selling like this email marketing software that I would get like a $20 commission for. And long story short, started selling some, started making some money online as like a part-time thing that allowed me to not get a job. But then Kayla Maddox invited me out to San Diego to speak on stage with Gerard Adams and Dan Fleshman, who at the time I saw on social media, but I really didn't know who they were. But remember, I was watching Ty Lopez's content really closely. I was in his like 67 step program. And this guy named Dan Fleshman was someone that was in his program. So 
long story short, I go out to San Diego. I fly me and my dad out because that was the only way I was allowed to go out there, my dad said, if, if I flew him out. So I spent the money I had at the time and just completely like went all in, flew out to San Diego. First time ever going to California. That was my dad's first time ever going out there. We go to this event for like two days called the Epic Mastermind Experience. And that was the first time I ever spoke at an event. And I meet Dan Fleshman. We get some pictures. I meet Gerard Adams, Kayla Maddox. And boom, that event was amazing. But here's here's where it really, I would say, like pivoted me that allowed me to start building my brand. So I get back from this event and it was, I remember January 16th, 2017. And I send Ty Lopez a DM on Instagram. And at the time I maybe have like two, three, 4,000 followers. I'm starting to slowly but surely grow my brand. I had some content from me speaking and with Caleb and with Dan Fleshman and Gerard Adams and just like the positioning of people on my Instagram. DM Ty. I was like, hey Ty, I was in your... I was like, hey, Ty, eight months ago, I was in a neck brace, super depressed, not knowing what I wanted to do with my life. And yesterday, I just got home from an event that I spoke at in San Diego with Dan Fleshman and Caleb Maddox. And I just wanted to thank you so much for completely transforming my life. Like, thanks so much. And I just sent him an appreciation message overall. And Ty ends up DMing me back like 20 minutes later, like the night I got back from this event. And he's like, what up, man? Like, tell me more about your story. So I send him this little small paragraph, which is like, I got into your program. I started doing this started selling these wristbands, built this brand Rise the Young, and overall just sending him like my, like the things I was doing. Long story short, to really wrap this up, Ty says, hey, I want to fly you out to LA and shoot a video with you. Would you be interested? And I was this 16 year old kid freaking out. I'm like, is this real? I have to now try to sell my mom on letting me go to California with this random guy that she doesn't know on social media. And two weeks later, they fly out, me and my mom, to LA. They put us in a hotel. We go to Ty Lopez's house. I'm in a bunch of his videos. He's shouting me out. I'm getting a bunch of credibility from this industry at the time. And that was like the major pivoting point in my life where like I was like, wow, like this is becoming real. I'm meeting the mentors in my life that I was following. I was getting the credibility from just not only making money online, but applying Ty's principles. And he was giving me shout outs and I was building a following like that was the first like major pivotal, pivotal moment in my life that sort of set the tone for the rest of Step 2017, which then led to starting the podcast at the end of it. All right. So there's a lot to digest there. And one, one thing that I thought was really cool is you talking about like going and doing your speaking event. So like, I, I want to talk about how like your confidence changed between, you know, before you did that, I'm sure you're anxious about going on stage for the first time. And then what happened like after, and then same thing with Ty, it's like for a 16 year old kid, I can only imagine I would, I would be so nervous just to go, you know, be in that community and be like, wow, what if, you know, what if I say something wrong or I'm not, you know, everything I say, I am like, you almost, almost start to like question yourself. Like, what did that do? Like just starting to align with these people. People. And like, what was your mindset like going into the first time you spoke, the first time you went and saw Ty? And what did it do for your confidence like afterwards? Because I think that's really important, just going those anxious moments and being able to push through that stuff. Yeah, no, no, I love that question too. Cause like, it's funny, like growing up, I hated public speaking and I, I, I would, I wouldn't consider myself shy growing up, but like, if I didn't know what I like, for example, walking in a room and just introducing myself to someone was not something I looked forward to every day growing up, right? And like I hated speaking to the class when we're doing book reviews. But I think the, the one thing that really changed me and my confidence towards speaking and introducing myself to people was like being genuinely interested in not only the subject, but the people. Like if I was to do a, a book review on Snapchat from a book that I love, like Think and Grow Rich, like I'm actively, I love talking about it and I, I like posting about it. But if I'm reading a book from school and I don't, I didn't really read it, I skimmed through it, I didn't love the topics and I just, then I'm, I, then I get asked to go speak in front of my class, I would not feel good and confident with that. So I think the biggest thing for me was actually finding something like Snapchat marketing or social media that I was really involved with and invested into that allowed me to like speak willingly. But on in terms of like the first time I spoke on stage, like I, I still have the video. It's like, it was for sure like you can tell it was the, my first time speaking, but I think, and I tell this all the time to people now, like doing the things you're afraid of and pushing over those uncomfortable situations are exactly what you need to do to get to the next level. Like, but before I interviewed Grant Cardone and Gary Vee and Andy Vercella. Like I interviewed 20 of my close friends that I already had in my network that I already had rapport with. And it, it allowed me to get like, how do I interview people under my belt? It allowed me to get some skin in the game and perfect my craft before I communicated with these big guys. But in the sense of going from my first event in San Diego to then walking into 
Ty Lopez's house in Beverly Hills at 16 years old. Like I wouldn't say it was intimidating because I was so excited and I, um, I, I knew how to carry myself. I believe at a young age and I believe like the way you carry yourself and introduce yourself is super important. And I made sure I was aware of that, but it was one of those things where everything was new to me. You know, it was like, I've never been to LA before. So I was excited. I, I followed Ty for almost a year and a half now and I was excited to meet him. And I, I always understood this simple concept, which is never put people on a pedestal. This is something that I used to watch all the time. When you see, like I was just studying these entrepreneurs and you have to understand that everyone has a story. Everyone started from somewhere. So I really tried to like live with that, like with that mentality of like, don't walk in somewhere and fanboy and like position yourself and just carry yourself. Like you just want to take a picture with someone. Like I've always tried to adapt and just be genuinely interested in someone and walk into any place with just a curious mindset and just the opportunity to ask questions because that's how, that's how you learn. And that's how you really build a relationship with someone is by communication. So that, that's the simple way. I'm not sure if that's what you expected to hear, but that, I would say that's how I was really able to do that at a young age is just, just being genuinely interested in other people and having a willingness to learn. 100%. I think that's exactly the answer that I was looking for. And it's ironic that, you know, you and John Danes and like some, some of the friends and colleagues that I, uh, I'm interviewing first are, you know, the people that inspi- inspired me to, to start a podcast because I've been marketing podcasts for years, but I, uh, I never put it out there myself. And I was like, I have to start practicing what I preach. And it's almost kind of following that same blueprint is, you know, eventually we're going to be interviewing the biggest brands in the world. But I, I was like, we got to start somewhere, might as well get started with the people I know the best. So I think your strategy showed me a lot about how I wanted to go about this. And I, I, I it was, yeah, you've done it, you've lived it. So you've, you've inspired me to put out more episodes to do more. And like, I'm, I'm, I'm just following the Casey Adams blueprint. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I like that. <laughs> so, so let's, Talk about this because now, you know, you've gone for, I, I think you got a lot of confidence from those first few experiences. And now it's like that, that is just like old news. Now you'll, you'll start a conversation with anybody, it could be the biggest name in the world. And you'll start a conversation like they're an old friend and you know everything about them and that, that you want to know more and you want to interview them. And you're like, Hey, I'm, I am who I am. Let's talk about it. And like, how do you, how do you do that? I, can, I know a lot of it's DMing, but how do you go about like finding people? How do you go about networking and how do you go about like starting these relationships with people? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and I kind of want to bring even the people listening up to speed because I know obviously it's like, it's the middle of 2019. We're in July heading into August and where I'm at, I would say in the story was when I, when Ty flew me out, that was like early 2017. And like up to that point, I just want to kind of fill some people in before like in terms of like networking, because like from that moment, like I met people at Ty's house and then like literally the entire year of 2017, I was dedicating myself to going to networking events, whether that's once a month or every other month and really just spending time, money and effort into investing into my network. And that was like, for example, Dan Fleshman was an early connection of mine that now we're really good friends, but I was always trying to go to his networking events. And the one thing that Ty taught me early on, he said, if you want to build a network, there's two things you got to do. You have to go to networking events and you have to host networking events or business events. So long story short, in September, 2017, my buddy Kieran and I decided to throw this San Diego mastermind and we just marketed it on social media. We were selling tickets for like 40 bucks or whatever, but we ended up getting 150 people there. It was a successful thing. It was more so just a networking event in San Diego And then we decided to do one in Beverly Hills. We got an Airbnb for the night and long story short, 250 people ended up showing up at the time. I'm still building my brand, networking with people. And that's when like that year, like I published my book in July in 2017. And that's the year where I really just had so much experience with people. And I was just shooting the gun, like me going to school on a Wednesday afternoon. And then on Saturday, I was in Beverly Hills throwing an event with 200 people, like the founder of MySpace came and all this crazy stuff was happening. But I I was living like two different lives. I was like, I'm the, I was going to school in a math class on one day, like I said, and then going home and preparing for an event and calling the Airbnbs and scheduling the food and the, the catering and all that sort of stuff, then flying across the country by myself. But like, I learned a lot at a young age from just traveling, meaning like two years ago, and that's not long ago, right? But I just wanted to kind of bring it up to some like getting people aware of how I am where I am now was because like I wasn't waiting for the perfect opportunity. Like we had to literally like 
uh, 17 years old trying to get an Airbnb for the night in Beverly Hills. Like we had to find different loopholes and people to chat with and build a network of people that can connect us with different people, right? But long story short, this event in Beverly Hills went great. That's where I met my um, partner, John Malat. And then long story short, he became a client of mine. And now we partnered up on Build Your Empire with Joshua Denny. And now we host a lot of the like world-class networking events. We just did one with Drama from Young and Reckless in Los Angeles with almost 500 people. And now we've been able to do so many cool things together. But it, it, it has all been around networking and putting people first. You know, like our, the biggest thing that we make sure of in terms of any event that we host nowadays is that we put the people first. We, we try to put a speaker lineup together, which is different every single time. Like last time we had Robert Green and P-Rod, Paul Rodriguez, and he's won like eight X Games medals. And we try to just incorporate different people from our network into these events to really add the most value and opportunity in front of people. But just to really answer the question in terms of just the networking aspect, my number one goal from 16 years old was building a world-class network of people because I understood that social media is forever going to evolve. But how can I get to the point where I can just text the people I want to connect with? How can I build a relationship with someone that I can genuinely call them up and ask for advice and not just have someone liking my Instagram pictures? Like there's a fine line between you knowing someone and somebody knowing you and someone that's willing to help you. And I knew that if I could build a world-class network by the time I'm 21 or 19 and just have good people in my life that are genuinely there to support me, like the rest will fall into place because no matter what it is, and I know I'm rambling now, but like you do business with people, you know, it's like, if you want to interview people, it's with people. Every business deals with another person. So like I understood the value of people and relationships and I really just dove in head first and applied the principles that I've learned from books like Think and Grow Rich and How to Win Friends and Influence People, but did that in a social media format through, like you said, DMs. And we'll definitely get into that because that's definitely been like the secret tool. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you like building this network. It, it's funny because I tell people all the time, like, you know, getting on guest appearance podcasts, like building your network, like do, you know, DMing people, starting relationships and people sometimes only see the value of a relationship, whether with with only, they only see it as a transactional relationship is like, okay, if I know this person, how can I do business with them? But there's a lot of relationships where, you know, maybe there's not a monetary gain, but you almost view it as more of like a knowledge gain. Like talk about how you how you position like your friendships and relationships in the industry, not just to do business with, but more so as like knowledge and expanding your reach. For sure. So like, for example, like my core intent with starting a podcast in 2017 was networking. You know, like I I started it with the intent of, yes, I, I wanted to talk about things I wanted to talk about, but I understood. And still to this day, like there's so many podcasts out there. Like what does a 17 year old at the time have to say about business when you can hear from the best of the best, right? So I understood if I wanted to build a brand in the business community, I needed to associate myself with world-class entrepreneurs that have built businesses for the last 10 years. So I, I, I saw podcasting and I was hearing about podcasting through Gary V and he was talking about how to leverage it and how to maximize relationships and how to connect with people. So I was like, cool, let me just start this thing called a podcast, order a hundred dollar microphone off of, off of Amazon, which I still use today. And let me just go all in on podcasting, which is therefore reaching out to people, getting them on my podcast and interviewing them and asking questions. And I never considered myself a phenomenal interviewer. That's not, that's never something that I really looked at as something that I want to get involved with. But it was funny because I set up a meeting with Gary Vee through the DMs. And at the time he was talking a lot about podcasting and he still is, but that was when he really started to like put out content about it. And I was like, okay, if I have a meeting with Gary Vee in three months, how can I do 40 interviews with cool people that I can talk to him about to have a conversation with him and tell them that he's helped me? So that was my intent. I literally wrote down, like, I want to interview 40 people or have 40 episodes out by the time I meet Gary Vee. And I went into just over, like, just drive mode of like setting up interviews three times a week, coming home from school, doing the interviews, sending 25 DMs a day. And like, I started just adapting these principles that I still use to this day, which allowed me to like move so fast in terms of just getting an absurd amount of content out quickly. But in terms of the networking aspect, like you said, I oh, I never looked at things as transactional, but I understood that. And this is something I want a lot of young people to understand. The reason in 
I would say not only the reason why I was able to connect with a lot of these massively successful entrepreneurs, it was a consistency of just reaching out to them in the DMs, but you have to look at the value proposition for people that are ahead of you. Because at the time, if you're asking someone to come on your show, you're reaching out for a favor, right? So you have to have some sort of value to reciprocate. Just that's how the game works. And I had an audience, whether that was 20,000 followers or 50,000 followers at the time, whatever it was, I had this young generation listening to my podcast. I was ranking in the podcast charts. Huge shout out to Carson with helping me from day one. And I, I overall was positioning myself in terms of value to the person I wanted to interview that already had a brand, already had an audience. So that was the the value proposition that I came at them with. And then it came down to the the DMing them, to setting it up, but always just having a core intent and communicating with them in an authentic way. But that, that sort of summarizes just how and why I started connecting with people. But I knew that the, the, pla- uh, the podcast and the platform in which it is, it allows you to literally cut the learning curve between any relationship sit down with someone and talk to them for an hour and a half and ask any question. And therefore, once you do that with somebody, you tend to not forget who they are, right? If, if, if someone likes my Instagram picture, I might check out their profile and like, I'll, I'll like some of their posts, but that's about it. But if someone likes my profile, they send me a DM and then I sit down with them for an hour and a half on a podcast, I will never forget that person, you know, like you truly build depth and relationships through podcasting. And I did that with hundreds of people in a short amount of time, which therefore allowed me to build a quality network so quickly. So I would say that that's been the key for sure. Well, and, and what's great about that too is, you know, one conversation always leads to the next thing. You know, I'm a big believer in just start, you know, like you'll figure out the details along the way. Like maybe, maybe there's not something that's, you know, you're going to do business with that person right away, but you start that relationship. Like you said, you have that hour long conversation. Now they know what you do, you know what they do, like vice versa. And then it leads to other things. So that transitions me to the Gary V conversation. So you started this relationship with Gary V and next thing you know, now you've got a brand deal with his, with K Swiss and his sneaker brand. Like what, what was that story? How did that come about? I, I, uh, I, I always wanted to ask you about that story. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so with K Swiss, um, if, if for those who don't know, K Swiss, um, they've been around for over 50 years, but over the last four years, they've made a massive transition into like becoming the entrepreneur shoe. They want to be the, instead of the Nike for athletes, they want to be the K Swiss for entrepreneurs. So they partnered up with Gary V. And uh, it's funny because I, I interviewed the CEO of K Swiss, Barney Waters, and I interviewed him probably over a year ago. And I was just really diving into their vision for what they're doing. And I was talking to them about how I love the shoes because one of the things and reasons how K Swiss popped up on my radar because it wasn't just three years ago where I would never be wearing K Swiss. I didn't know they were like, like growing in a sense, but I saw this entrepreneur like point that they were diving into. And I loved it because I was listening and following Gary V. So therefore, um, one time Gary V's team reached out to me, they sent me a pair of shoes and I was like, all right, I, like, I love the concept of this. So I reached out to the CEO, got him on the podcast. But in terms of what we're doing and what we've done together, some of the things that we're working on can't disclose too much, but in terms of what I've done with them, I've been on the K-Swiss CEOs Wear Sneakers podcast and they'll send me a lot of their exclusive stuff before it drops and I'll be posting a lot of the content and they're, we've really built a good relationship just because like huge shout out to my buddy Omar. He does all of the um, K-Swiss social media and we were able to build a really good relationship early on. I invited him out to my event in um, Scottsdale, Arizona and he came out, saw the community that we were building around entrepreneurs, especially young entrepreneurs, because what K-Swiss says is they're the voice for the next generation of entrepreneurs. And they want the next generation to be rocking K-Swiss. But long story short, the goal is to really create some sort of entrepreneur shoe with them and what they're doing. And like I said, I can't disclose too much, but I'm really excited because it's a, it's a brand and just giving more context to personal branding, like everything I do, I want it to be something that takes things off of social media. So for example, you can have, I have a podcast that's on social media, my Instagram that is social media. But when I have an event in a city such as Los Angeles, like we did, we're bringing 500 people and 20 speakers. And just like, we're creating a community, which you can't duplicate in a social media world. Like you're truly 
you have to go to a city, you have to book the venue, you have to meet the people, you have to shake the hands, you have to truly build with people. And that's my objective. But same thing with branding. Instead of having a, a cool brand deal online, like having your own shoe is different than having a podcast, right? And even though both are extremely valuable, I always look for, and I, I want the people listening today, no matter what avenue of personal branding you're in, my biggest piece of advice would try to take things off platform, try to bring things to like real life if you can, because it builds character, it builds depth. Like when I walk into Grant Cardone's 10X Growth Con and there's 35,000 people, it gives you a completely different perspective of who Grant Cardone is, right? So that is a huge, I would say, point and a credibility builder for anything you want to do is take things off platforms, such as a shoe, such as an event or whatever you want to do. But that's been my goal. And K-Swiss has definitely been a huge vehicle and such an amazing company to work with for sure. That's incredible value too, because I I think the same way. Like people that say that social media doesn't work, it's because they're only having these conversations on social media. Like social media is a great conversation starter. Like it's a great way to start a DM that leads to a phone call. It's a great way to start a podcast that creates a conversation that eventually leads to a meeting. You know, it's a great way to, you know, put out content that answers questions about your brand that eventually leads to, you know, a brand reaching out to you wanting to do a shoe deal. But it's all about like, how do you, how do you take that content? How do you create that brand? But then that leads to business in real life. So I'm really glad that you talked about that, which makes me want, want to talk about like the events because if your events are the, what's your, you know, your main focus is on like when I, we, I was, when I saw you out in Arizona a month ago or so, you were talking about how, you know, events are what you're really excited about. What's, you know, kind of next on the horizon that you want to focus on or what, what makes like an event so powerful that you can't get anywhere else? For sure. And no, it, it's something that's literally like a huge passion of mine. And I, I see myself doing this for like, the remainder of my life just because events, it brings so much context. So going back to the point of why I do events and what I believe we're going to be doing moving forward. So early on, like I said, Ty Lopez said, host events and throw events, host events and go to events and your network will build faster than anything in the world. So like by throwing events, I'll kind of walk you through like my three-step process, right? And this is how I've been able to build a massive network and you, anyone can duplicate this. So Number one, I built up a personal brand on social media, Instagram more exactly. That's step one. Step two, I had the podcast, but the, the bridge between that is the DM, right? I want to have a brand where I can DM someone to get on my podcast. I have someone on my podcast, we build rapport, and then when I have a, an event, I ask the person that I have rapport with to come support and be and speak at the event. And then once that we have once they speak at the event, they see more about what I do, they see the community that I've built, they see that we can fill a room with hundreds of people. Therefore it gives respect for what you do because you've taken this like idea of something and you've filled a room with hundreds of people, which like at the end of the day, the, the biggest thing that I've now learned and witnessed is there's a massive difference between being an influencer and having influence. Meaning you see all the time that people with millions of followers, they, they can't sell 30 t-shirts, right? Or they can't sell five phone cases. And you see this a lot with companies that are spending a lot of money doing brand deals. So I want to focus from going from an event with 50 people to what we did with 500 to then 5,000 in the next couple of years, because that is true influence. Getting people to book a plane ticket, to book a hotel, to buy a ticket, to show up at a certain place at a certain time, just through your phone and through social media, like that's complete level of like real life impact and influence and what you can truly use to impact people. But going back to the event, so I'll speak on something that we recently did in May with um, Bill Drempire, Young and Reckless. Um, for those who don't know, Young and Reckless is a huge clothing brand that is run by Drama, Chris Drama Faf, and he's the CEO of Young and Reckless. They've been a top streetwear brand for the past 10 years. And I've been watching drama since I was like eight years old on t TV when he was on like Rob Dyrdek's Fantasy Factory and Robin Big and all these big shows. And we've actually been able to form a partnership in a, a great relationship. And now we had an event together where we had, like I said, people like Robert Greene and Paul Rodriguez and Mark and Cole from Iconic and so many just world-class influencers. But now instead of doing it by myself, we've partnered up with a brand like Young and Reckless and drama that have so much history and credibility that it's not only building credibility for the event, it's building credibility for our brand, but it's making it something that more people want to be a part of because of just how everything's unfolding. But the event is something that like we're going to be doing one in October back in LA. And like our goals 
500 to 1,000 people, right? So like our goal and my goal moving in this direction is just building a community of people where like, and we truly want to change the game by making it simple. So this is it. Like we charge, last event was $50. This next one, it's going to be 100 and we, we make it so low ticket because we don't want to have a barrier to entry. We're not here to sell you a bunch of things and pitch from the stage. Like people don't like that. And like, yes, there's, there's times and places for it for, to do that. But we want to build a true community of people that are there to genuinely give value and help people. And they've already built the brands. They have their ways of making money. And we're just building a community of in a network of people where you can find your potential next business partner. You can learn something. You can learn these stories and feel inspired. But most importantly, you're just in a healthy environment with good people that are genuinely have your best interest in mind. And that's what we want to do with Build Your Empire, with Young and Reckless and really just take over that whole avenue of just making the business event industry cool and then turning it into something where we have 25,000 people in arena and we just do it on that next level stage with whether that's like The Rock or Will Smith or just these big names that you don't hear from that much, but just doing it in a business entrepreneur layout. So that's the goal. That's why we do it. And I'm really excited for it. Brother, I'm really excited to watch you keep doing it. It's it's really funny. I think I told you this last time I saw you and you you're really becoming like a super networker. Like you you've you've literally figured out that you know what you're good at and you know what makes you successful and then you just you're just going and finding all these other people that are good at other things and figuring out how we all do it together and and we all win together. And I think when you look back 3 to 5 years from now, people people are going to start thinking like, "Okay, how do I know this person? How do I know that person?" And a lot of those webs are going to go back to you because <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, I think the reason that I know probably 75% of the people, you know, all three of my guests so far. So the reason the reason that I know Ashwin Jacob is because of you. <laughs> Steven Matt is because of Ashwin and then and then John Danes obviously because of uh, this whole community. So it's almost like you you've really perfected this model of like a community and building up together and finding what you're good at and then finding a partner or a group of people that are good at what you're not good at and kind of all building together. And that's what's made your podcast successful. That's what's made you successful. And I just think it's, it's really cool how, you know, you, you, you don't use, it's not a scarcity mentality. Like you're not like, okay, I can't introduce this person to this person because then maybe they won't want to work with me. It's almost like, Hey, let's all just create this huge web community and we'll all win together. Is that something you, you think about, or is that something just as innate, you know, to you? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I, I think for me, like the biggest, like the biggest lesson that I, I've learned in like the past couple of years is like, a yes, I believe it's important to keep your network close, but you want to like people that are willingly out there. Like for example, I bring up Dan Fleshman, right? He has some of the most phenomenal events that I've been to where I've met so many amazing people and he's introduced me to so many great people, but he does it just out of the willingness of he is a giver and he's someone that wants to help you. And therefore he's been able to connect with so people, so many people and people are just genuinely invested into just giving back to him because of what they do for him, what he does for them. And I, and I've adopted this mentality of just like, no matter like, for example, of just whether that's connecting somebody with someone or speaking about how great someone is because I genuinely believe in them. Like for me, it's all about showcasing others because I believe the way you build yourself up is by building others up. If you talk about yourself, like that comes from an egotistical perspective. I, I want to build my brand by association. And one of the quotes that I always live by, it's, I say, I want to be respected by the respected. Because if, for example, if you know somebody and you introduce them to somebody, if you already have respect for that figure, like you instantly have more rapport with someone if they introduce you or if someone gives you that sort of like, hey, he's a great person, go check him out. And I just want to get more people and out there in terms of like my usage of my audience, but doing that through events is where I know that it's like, that's the depth, right? I've interviewed hundreds of people and I've had dozens of people speak at my event, but I know moving forward, what I truly plan to do, and this is really important with just everything that's happening in this space is like, I want to start showcasing and building my network of people that you don't really hear from often, right? So like at our next event, we're going to be having like Rob Dyrdek come on and speak, which is drama's cousin. And you don't really hear from him that much. And he's not in this entrepreneur community. He's an entrepreneur that happens to have a story that he can speak on. And we want to more so tap into these different networks, but out of like the willingness and like my genuinely, my genuine 
mindset towards this whole space is like, I want to connect people. I want to build a network of people and not only just say, Hey, connect with everyone, but just showcase what people are doing, what they're giving back to the community. And overall, just be someone that introduces people to good people. And obviously everything comes back in the end because I really believe in karma. And if you do good upon others, good will be done upon you. And I believe if you live in that mentality, like you always have to, you, you'll live in a state of gratitude, which is just good things happening at the end of the day. This is knowledge after knowledge. And it's funny because all the stuff we talked about is all stuff that you're doing in your business. And it's all stuff that you're doing to build your brand. But it's also like strategies and tips. I tell people to all the time with their podcasts. Like if you can go on other podcasts, if you can start associating your brand with other brands, like it starts to create leverage, it starts to create relationships, it starts to just start that wave of, of brand building. So we're, we're running to the end here. I want to respect your time, but you know, I want to talk about your podcast for a second. Like what is Rise of the Young? Have you been able to build it? And what's, what's next for the podcast? Yeah. So, um, so Rise of the Young, um, like I said earlier, like I started the podcast 2017 and I like to say that I've really, over the last year and a half, it was all focused on interviews and for the intent of just building a network. And it still is to this day where I use it to build relationships through a network. But moving forward, I know and we've talked about this privately. It's like my goal is to start talking more on stories and experiences that I've had over the past three years because I've always, I was always in this mindset of like, oh, what, like, I have good things to say, but I'd rather interview someone else and get their message out there. But moving forward, I'm, I'm, I post a, a podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, three times a week. And I sort of adopted that model because my favorite podcast, Group Chat, they post three times a week. But yeah, my, moving forward, that's the plan. And my core intent and purpose of the podcast, it's called Rise of the Young. And it's really to give young people, this Generation Z, anyone from 16 to 25, like insight into not only what I've been able to build, but like giving you what you need to hear from the people that have actually built something, but from a young person like myself, from my perspective, because it's sometimes it's hard to relate to if, if you hear Tony Robbins and he's a billionaire and he's speaking and getting paid $500,000 an hour and all these crazy things, like hearing that sometimes it's not relatable, but I believe me being 19 years old and sitting down with some of the greats, not Tony Robbins yet, but sitting down with these world-class people and just dissecting their stories, like going from like when they were 18 years old and like whether that they were doing drugs or hanging out with the wrong people to someone like Grant Cardone at 25 who made a massive change and now he manages billions of dollars in real estate, like going from and taking them back to some of these people that have like insane lifestyles and wealth, but taking it back and clicking that restart button on like, all right, but when you were 18, like what were you doing? Like helping this new generation learn like the steps and foundations that they've learned along the way. Like it's not only valuable to me, I learned so much, but it gives me a platform to really educate others and just get stories out there from people that have stories to tell. And that's how I've utilized it. And it's something that I know we've talked about, like this whole podcasting space. Yes, it's been around for years, but it's still very, very new. And I know that um, you know the facts about like how many podcasts, but it's still very young and early. So I know I tell people all the time, like start a podcast because it's it's the consistency of how you leverage it that can really give you a platform to speak on. And I know you can talk more on that, but it's, it's definitely something I plan on doing for the rest of my life because this industry, I believe, is only going to continue to grow. And if you do it right and you be consistent, there's a lot to um, go along with it for sure. Yeah, I, I think people see podcasting and they uh, they see like, okay, there's a ton of podcasts now. But if you compare that to anything else, you know, there's we're nearing 800,000 podcasts, but how many of those are currently active? How many of those are putting out content weekly? You know, how, how many of those are, are interesting? How many of those are actually in your niche? You know, so you start to break it down and then you compare that, you know, how many Instagram accounts there are, how many websites there are, how many Facebook pages there are. And there's still such a huge opportunity to break through. And that's what I've loved about, you know, watching your brand take off is I really think that your podcast has given you that leverage and confidence that's led to your speaking career, that's led to you networking and creating a lot of business opportunities. That's what I want to push people to do, like to start a podcast without the intent of saying, I want to start this podcast to make money because I have so many people that come to me and say, I want to start this podcast. How do, how do I get to 10,000 downloads? How do I get 10,000 subscribers so that I can get advertiser dollars? And 
at a CPM rate, you know, at the very most $32 per thousand listeners, like you're not going to make a whole lot of money if your goal is only to start a podcast to, to make money off advertising dollars. It's what you do with it from there. It's the content, the expertise, the alignment and connections that you make that the that lead to offline relationships that lead to business. So I think you just you've done such an amazing job of that. And I Casey, I appreciate you coming on and sharing uh, sharing some gold. We're, we're nearing like 50 minutes now. So I appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing all these insights with the the audience. Thank you so much, Carson. And real quick too, like I, man, I'm not just saying this to say this, but like Carson's helped me so much just like learn about this space. I know me and Carson will we'll always have conversations. And it's like, he's done this for so long and like he's given me so much insight. So like if you're listening, like continue to listen to this show because I know I am. And like he has so much knowledge on it that we need to circle back and get you on my show so we can just dive into more of the facts and like the future of podcasting because I'm sure my audience would want to know and vice versa. I can't wait, brother. We'll we'll make it happen. So before I let for you sure. before I let you go, where uh, if people want to interact with you, where where can they find you? Yeah, so um, best place for me now is um Instagram. You can follow me at Casey Adams One, as well as if you want to follow my company, Build Your Empire. It's just at Build Your Empire. And if you want to stay updated with the podcast, it's just at Rise of the Young. And if you want to talk to me personally, you can download my app Moti M O T I, and that is a consulting app that um, if you want to have some one on one time with me, don't hesitate. Just add me on there and shoot me a call. So that's pretty much the best ways to find me. So thanks so much, Carson. I love it. And if you want to get in touch with Casey, better be a clever DM. This man has <laughs> invented the power of the DM. So if you're looking to get in touch with people, like you want to talk to like big, credible, credible names, you want people to actually respond to you, like start following Casey, listen to some of the stuff he, he says and some of his tips and tricks, like people will start yeah. responding. So Casey, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, we will talk Absolutely. again soon. Yep. Thanks so much for having me, Carson. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the Giant Voices podcast. If you love the show, don't forget to subscribe, share, and leave a review. Also, if you have questions, message us on Instagram at Giants underscore voices or message Carson at Carson J.